Good morning, Grade Eights, and welcome again to Worksheet Cloud Mathematics. I hope you're all, all well this morning and ready to learn a little bit more. Right, as you know, my name is Joe Milligan, and I'm going to take you through a further exercise or a further lesson on algebraic equations. We're also going to touch a little bit on expressions and how to use these two in solving problems. But first, let's see what we've actually learned together. Okay, so so far we have learned what an expression is. We have also learned how to write an expression from a word statement. We have learned how to substitute into an expression. So when we get given the value of the variable, how to put that into the expression and then evaluate the expression. We've also learned what an equation is and the difference between an equation and an expression. We've then learned how to work out the value for the variable in that equation. And we've learned how to balance an equation. That's quite a lot of work that we've done in such a short space of time. So well done, guys. Let's keep going. Okay, we're now going to learn how to use an expression and an equation to solve a problem. As I said just now, let's first look at an expression. So firstly, an expression is used when you may have many values for a variable, but the same situation is at play. So for example, there are a number of children in a classroom, and for every two children, a desk is needed. Okay, so we know that there's a number of children, but we don't know how many children there are in the classroom. But for every two children, you need one desk. So your expression, sorry, would be half x. Or you can say x divided by 2 or x over 2. So we've got half the number of desks for the number of children. Okay. If your expression is half x, then we would work out how many desks we would need for any number of children. So it wouldn't matter if one classroom had 10 children in it, we'd work out the number of desks for that. If another classroom had 40 children in, we would work out the number of desks for that classroom. So if there were 50 children, we could calculate that half of 50, which would give us an answer of 25 desks. So we would know in a classroom where 50 children were sitting, then there would be 25 desks for them because two children would be sharing a desk. So we could put this into a table format. And if we have a look at the table here, the number of children is written above. We then apply the rule, which is half of that, and we find out the number of desks below. So for example, as I said just now, you've got a classroom with 10 children in, and you would divide that by two to get five or find half of 10. Same thing, it's just said in a different way. Right, we now have 12 children, we now have 6 desks. 20 children, 10 desks. 30 children, 15 desks. 40 children, 20 desks. And you're probably saying to yourself, well that's great because all of those are even numbers. What happens if there's an odd number of children? Well then we would have to work it out and round up the number of desks because there can't be a child without a desk. So in other words, if we had 11 children, then it would actually be five and a half desks. We can't have half a desk, so we would round it up and get another desk and have six desks, and that sixth desk would have a spare space. I hope you understand that. Remember, if there's anything that you don't understand or you want to query, there is the email address at the bottom for the Grade 8 classroom. Just email your query through to that email address and somebody will get back to you with the answer. Right, now let's look at how to use an equation to solve a problem. Here's the problem. The length of a school field is four times its width. If the perimeter is 400 meters, what would the length and the width of the field be? Okay, now remember that there are two widths in a, on a field and there are two lengths. So that needs to be doubled and that needs to be doubled to give you the 400 meters. Okay, so your equation would be 8x plus 2x equals 400, where the length is 8x and the width is 2x. And the reason it's like that, remember, I said that your width is x, but you have to double it to be able to work with the perimeter. The same with your length, you have to double it to work with your perimeter. Now, as you can see, 8 is double 2 anyway, oh, sorry, 8 is 4 times 2 anyway, and it's 4 times, your length is 4 times the field's width. Okay, I hope you all understand that one. Let's just go over it one more time. 
you need two widths and two lots of lengths to make up your perimeter. If your width is x, then you have to have double that. If your length is four times your width, then you have to double that to get 8x. Right, let's go on. So we could work out the equation as being 8x plus 2x equals 400. You're then going to get 10x equals 400. Okay, you're going to divide your 10x by 10, and you're going to divide your 400 by 10. Remember, we've got to keep that scale balanced. And you're going to end up with x being 40. Now remember, that x is the width. Okay, it's 40 meters for the width which means that 40 times 4, because your length is 4 times the width, is going to give you 160. So your length of your field would be 160 meters. Now let's work that out again and see if that gives us a 400 meters for our perimeter. So 40 meters for one width and 160 meters for one length, you add those together, you get 200 meters. That's halfway around your field. Double that and you will get your perimeter of 400 meters. Okay, let's go on. Let's try one together. The admission fee at a movie house is one and a half times more for adults than it is for children. If a family of two adults and two children has to pay 250 Rand to go to the movie, what is the cost of a movie ticket for an adult and for a child? Now remember, the adults are one and a half times. They're not... Um, twice the the cost of the child's ticket it's one and a half times so you could almost work out one and a half times the children okay so we would use three for the adults because remember it's the children which is two plus another half that half of two is one so we use the adults as three and the children as two because we've got two children and we have the answer of 250 rand because that's how much it costs to go to the movies for this family okay 3x plus 2x gives me 5x 5x is equal to 250 rand therefore 1x is equal to 50 rand remember we've got to divide that side by 5 and if we divide that side by 5 to get our x we have to divide that side by 5 too to keep our scale balanced and we get 50. so each child would pay 50 rand and therefore, each adult would pay 75 Rand because it's one of those plus half of those. Half of 50, 25. 50 plus 25 is 75. You could also work it out as one and a half times 50, which is actually would be 3 over 2 times 50. It would give you 75. Right. So if we had to calculate the, the costs, it would be 50 Rand for one child, 50 Rand for another child. 75 Rand for one adult and 75 Rand for another adult and all together that would give you 250 Rand. Okay, remember if there's anything that's unclear, email that email address at the bottom and somebody can help you. Right, now let's try one on your own. First decide whether this would be, need an expression or an equation. Here's your um, problem and try and work it out on your own. Um, on a piece of paper, so pause the video now, and then we will go over it together. Right, Michelle collects stamps in her collection for every five cent stamp. There are six ten cent stamps. So for every one five cent stamp she's got, there will be six ten cent stamps. So every month she doubles the number of five cent stamps she has, and obviously the ten cent stamps get increased by the same proportion. How many stamps will she have six months from now? Okay, so the suggestion here is you would probably use an expression in this case. So your expression would be x times 6 because the 5 cent stamps is the x and times 6 to get how many 10 cent stamps she would have every month. Okay, we would probably then put this into a table because it is easy to work out. That would be the rule for the table, um, what you would um, apply to your number of stamps, so she, oh, of 5 cent stamps, sorry, so the 5 cent stamps at the top, let's double those first, we've got 1 in the first month, double that is 2 in the second month, double that will be 4 in the third month, double 4, 8, 16 and 32, and there you have your 6 months worth of 5 cent stamps, but now 
we have to work out with the same proportion how many uh, 10 cent stamps she would have. So the first month, if she's got one 5 cent stamp, she has six 10 cent stamps. The second month, that doubles to two. So the bottom, you have to go two times six is going to give me 12. There's your rule. Four times six, 24. Eight times six, 48. 16 times six, 96 and 32 times 6, 192, okay? So therefore, she will have 32 5 cent stamps and 192 10 cent stamps, and so altogether, she would have 224 stamps, okay? Let's just go over it again. Your rule is x times 6. You put into your table the number of 5 cent stamps. You're going to double every single month. You then times all your 5 cent stamps each month by 6 to get what your, your 10 cent stamps are, how many 10 cent stamps you have. You then take your 10 cent stamps and add it to the number of 5 cent stamps you have and you're going to end up with 224 stamps altogether. So Michelle has collected 224 stamps in 6 months. Right, now try this one. Of 3 angles in a triangle, the smallest is half the size of the second smallest and is one third the size of the largest. Find the size of each angle. Pause the video, you try and work it out and then we'll go over it together. Right, let's use an equation and let the smallest angle be x. Okay, so we've got x and then the second angle is, is double that. Um, because it says the first angle is half the size of the second smallest, which is the middle angle, because triangle only has three angles. Okay, so that would be 2x. And then it is one third of the size of the largest one, which means that the largest one must be three times the size of the smallest one. So there's the smallest angle, double to get the second angle, and the smallest angle times three to get to the biggest angle. And we also know that angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. And so we can add all of those together to get 180 degrees. Okay, so x plus 2x plus 3x is going to give you 6x. And 6x is equal to 180 degrees. We know what to do next. We have to divide 6x by 6 to get x on its own which means we have to divide 180 by 6 to get what the value of x is. So the value of x is 30. But we haven't finished here because we've only found the, the size of one angle. So to double that, we, the second angle would be 60. And then we multiply it by 3 to get the angle of 90. And add these together, we've got an angle of 30, 60 and 90, which gives us 180. So it is correct. Right, let's see if you can do one more. Okay, the sum of the sizes of two angles named x and y is 127. If the size of x is 34 more than half of angle y, what is the measure of each angle? This is a bit of a tricky one. Let's see how you do. Pause the video, try and work this out on a piece of paper, and then we will go over it together. Don't be despaired by the fact that there are x and y's in this. We will, I will show you exactly what to do, but you try first. Right, let's have a look. You would use an equation here, and it would be x plus y is 127. If the size of x is 34 more than half of angle y, then we could say x is 34 plus half of a y, okay? Do you all get that? Okay, let's just go over it again. X plus Y is 127 because it says the sum of the sizes of two angles named X and Y is 127. So together it's 127. If the size of X, it doesn't say it is 34, it says it's 34 degrees more than half of angle Y. So X is 34 degrees more than half of Y. So let's see if we can work this out. Okay, so we can substitute this in for x, okay, because that part would be your x, 34 degrees more than half of y, and all of that together gives us 127 degrees. So there's your x value, 
There's still a variable there, but don't worry, we'll be able to work it out. And there's your y value, oh, sorry, your y angle, and together they give you 127. Right, so we've got 1.5y is equal to 20, 127 minus 34. Where did we get that from? There's 1y, there's a half a y, that gives us 1.5y. Then we have 127 minus 34, because we took the 34 away from here, so we have to take it away from this side. So 1.5y gives us, we change that into an improper fraction, that mixed number, back into an improper fraction. It's just easier to work with. We end up with um, 2 times 1 plus 1, it gives us 3 over 2y is equal to 93 degrees, because 127 minus 34 would give us 93 Okay, so here we go, y is equal to 93 times 2 over 3, because to take that away or to get rid of that part, we've got to invert the operation. So we're going to times it by 2 over 3, it cancels that fraction out, and we end up having to times by 2 over 3 on this side. We then get y is equal to 62, because 93 times 2 divided by 3 gives us 62. We're not finished yet because we actually only have the value of y right now and we need to also find the value of x because there are two angles that we need to find the value for. Okay, so x is then 34 plus half of y. Remember that was our x value there. So we have to put it in here and we now have to substitute because we know that y is 62. So we would just substitute y as being 62 into there. And we will end up with x is equal to 34 degrees plus half of 62. What is half of 62? It's 31. So it would be 34 plus 31. And you're going to end up with an answer of 65 degrees. So your um, x value is 65 degrees and your y value is 62 degrees. So you've got your answer to both angles, one being 62 and the other one being 65. Let's just go over that one more time. Remember it told us that we have two angles that we're looking for, x and y. When we add them together, it's going to give us 127. We're not given the value of either one, but we are told that our x value is 34 degrees plus half of what the y value is. So there is our x value, 34 degrees plus half of y. And we can put that in and then it makes this almost easier to work with because it looks like we only have one unknown variable. If we add our half y to the whole y, we get one and a half y. We then take our 34 across, so we would have minused it from this side. So we've got to minus it from the other side, from the right hand side. 127 degrees minus 34 would give us 90 degrees. We change that to an improper fraction. It would be 3 over 2. We then have to inverse that. So it's times by 2 over 3. So we have to times 93 by 2 over 3. We end up with y being 93 degrees times by 2 over 3. 93 times 2 divided by 3 gives us 62. Okay, all happy with that? Right, now we've got our y value. And we can now put it in to create or to, to figure out what our x value is. So we know that x is equal to 34, 34 plus half of y. We know that because we told that. We know now what our y value actually is. Our y value is 62. We substitute it in. We've got 34 plus half of 62. Remember it said that x was 34 degrees plus half of 62. And it is 34, half of 62, sorry, is 31. 34 plus 31 gives us 65 degrees. So our x value being 65 degrees and our y value being 62 degrees. Right, guys, well done. That was quite intense. There's a lot to read when you get given a problem. And you first have to figure out, is it an expression or is it an equation? and how we're going to manipulate it. So what is our expression going to look like? What is our equation going to look like? Okay, you can carry on practicing these. 
on the activity that has been set for you and remember to go through the memo very um, very thoroughly to see where you went wrong or where uh, how you set it out whether you set it out correctly if there are any queries please don't forget to send an email to grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com and somebody will get back to you to answer your query have a great day and i'll see you next time thank you so much for watching